So one thing I want to show you now, probably, and this will will this will take us to the end of the class, is uh, so I showed a, a, a one or two of you individually how to do this, but um, I'll kind of explain it to everyone now. So um, let me just upload the slides for this to eCentennial. Um, so, what we'll do is, so let's, let's look at that again. So if we run this and we have an integer, it works fine, okay? But if we run it again and we have some, some weird input, and this is very possible, humans make errors all the time, then we're going to get this exception, okay? So how do we do that? How can we handle it gracefully so that our, our uh, program doesn't crash? The way we do that is we use the tr we use a try catch um, block of code. Okay, so what we do is any code that we feel could possibly um, result in an error. So let's say if you're opening up a file, or you're basically if you're communicating with anything outside your program, so a file or another program or uh, a person, a human, then there's possibility for error. What could be the error? Let's say your program tries to open a file. What's an error that could occur? The file's not found? Yeah, the file's not there, right? Or the file's corrupted, or mil there's a million things that could happen. Your program, like you can't, as a developer, you can't know if, you know, everything's going to be okay. So you have to include error handling in your code so that if it does not work, you don't want your program to crash. Okay, that's that's bad. Question. Yeah. Why doesn't C sharp automatically have an exception handler? Why does it want you to type it out? Because if almost all the time you need it anyways, almost all the time you need it. Yeah. Computer, well, because the computer just does what you tell it. And so you have to tell it what to do when it gets that exception. An exception by its very nature means something outside the normal flow of your of your program. So you have to, the, the computer doesn't understand any of that. So you have to tell it well, what to do when there's an exception. The thing that you're tell it to do no, it could be, because there are different types of exceptions. Like, so when, when we did this, right? Um, when we did this, it told us the type of exception, right? It said format exception. That's the exception type. So maybe if it's a format exception, we might want to have a message saying that. If it's another type of exception, um, you might want to have another message. And so the compute, it, like it would be impossible for C sharp to know what what you want to do, right? By default, it crashes. That's that's pretty much it. It's an unhandled exception. It doesn't. You haven't told it what to do in this case. Okay. So what we do is we encapsulate our code that we think could fail in a try block. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're telling C Sharp, okay, this program could fail, but we want you to try it. And if it does fail, what we're going to do is we're going to catch the exception. Okay, and what we have to do, so this is almost like a little function here. Okay, and so what we have to say is we'll, we'll give it these arguments, exception, ex, and then any code that's in here will run if there's an if there's an exception like an if sort of yeah yeah in a way so you're it's sort of you're saying if this fails do this right otherwise just run it and then skip this okay so yeah it's sort of like a really specific type of if statement okay so then what we could say is message box we could message box dot show and then we'll have a message like, um, silly goof, you didn't enter a number. Okay? So now if we run it, whoops. Um, what's this? Value? Where did I get rid of that? Anyways, we'll just message, we'll comment that out. Okay, so now if I type the number, whoops, I type a number. We just get the, the the rest of the messages from the from the function. But now, if I type a letter, oops, 
Okay, and look, we didn't crash. Right now, the the user has an opportunity now to. What's that? Oh, that's just because the rest of the function just has these other messages from the from the beginning. So we'll just comment these out. Okay. Yeah, yeah, there will be. Watch. So if I, it'll just show the message and then give me a, a chance, right? So if I type in this, oops, right? And then I'm back, back in business, right? I could try again. Oh, shoot, that's still not a number. How about this? Is that a number? Yes, it is. It didn't fail. Okay. Um, so we can also, so what happens is when C sharp throws an error, uh, an exception, um, it it will it'll throw this little object here that will have some information. So let's see what we can add on. So what the the ex object will actually it has some information here. So it actually it'll tell us a message, and we can print out the message. Let's try that. What is ex? Can it be anything? Like you could call it anything. Yeah, you could call it Bob. Oh, is it a variable? It's a variable. Yep. And so this is a. It's just like when we called a method, right? And we we gave it the type and the name. So this is, and it's just convention that you call it either EX or E or something like that. Okay? So, and then we can, when we can, we can reference it here. So now if we have the exception, okay, it says, now it gives you a message. So you might want to just display that message instead, right? Input string was not in the correct format. Okay? And then we, it gives us an option to do it again, right? This part here? Yeah. yeah. So will it wait for the user to enter the number and then run it, or? No, it'll continue on with the function. Oh, so but that, that's not what we want, right? Like well. No, but if you don't want, then just don't have anything else after, after the method, right? Mm -hmm. So if you so are you saying oh what well what you could do is this is you can return out of the method. So if there's an error, let's say if there's an error and you don't want the rest of the code to run, so in your exception handler you just return out of the function, and that will skip everything. Right? So now if I do it and there's an error. So it, it prints out the message and then it skips everything else. But if it's correct, now I'm gonna get all those messages up down. Okay? Uh, okay, let me just check the notes, make sure I covered it. Um, yeah, the other thing we can do, we can have multiple, um, we can have multiple catch statements, right? Because this is the, so this is a super class of exceptions, right? There are subclasses of exceptions um, that are more specific. So remember when we didn't have our try catch, right? We had, um, Whoops. <coughs> and we did it. We got, what was the exception? It was a format exception unhandled. Okay? So we could have, instead of just having the generic exception, we could have a specific format exception. And that'll only catch format exception problems. Okay? Because, let's say if you're opening up a file, you might have a file not found exception. So then you might want to have a message saying, oh, this file wasn't found. Or maybe the file might be corrupted, and that might throw a different exception. Okay? And then you would catch that exception differently and handle it differently. OK? 
Okay, so you could have uh, multiple catches underneath one try. So depending on the type of air, then um, you'll handle the air differently. If you're having more than four really catches, then that means maybe your block of code is trying to do too much. You're trying to do too much and you should maybe cut it down a little bit, make your function more specific. Okay. So this will only capture format exception errors, right? Um, so let's say, okay, let's do this. Let's do this. Here's what we'll do. Okay. So another possible error is let's say we want to do this double, and we want to say uh, let's say uh, um, we'll call it uh, result. Okay. And result is going to equal five divided by uh, value. Okay, so here's let's so let's say we do this. So can anyone think of a, a source of an error that could that could happen from this? Yeah, divide by zero. So we already have. So what what was your what did you say? Well, but that's we already have that. We are we're already handling that exception. So if we do this, if we run this, and do this, okay. So see, it it caught the format exception because that's the type of error, okay. But what if I do this, zero, and I try and oh, e divide by zero exception, right? Why can't you divide by zero? It doesn't make sense. It doesn't. You can't do it. The universe will explode if you try and divide by zero. Okay. So what do we have to do now? So we're going to have two catch, two catches. We're going to have another catch called divide by zero exception. Okay. And then silly goof, you can't, you can't divide by zero. Okay, so now when we do it, okay, so now, what do you mean? That's a, that's a, that's a type of exception that's thrown. Multiple types, from what I heard, there are multiple types of exception. Yeah, so we had, when we first started, we had only exception. So that is that covers all subtypes of exceptions, just like car handles all subtypes of cars, right? But now we're making a we're making it more specific. We're saying, okay, not all exceptions. I want you only to catch certain types of exceptions. So one type is a format exception. Another type is a divide by zero exception. Those are two different errors. Okay, so now, and we probably, we might want to have a different error message. So now if I put zero here, it'll say you can't divide by zero. It's a different error, a different exception, a different handler. Okay, now if we put in this, oh, well, okay, we can't divide by zero. Can I divide by ASDF? No, you didn't enter a number. You need to put in a number. Okay, and then finally, okay, how about this one? Will this work? Okay, yes, now, now we have success. So see how we can use multiple catch statements to catch different types of problems, different types of exceptions. If you write, if you just write exception like this, it'll catch all exceptions. So even if I do this now, so now see it's saying um, uh, previous C. Uh, see, it says a previous catch already catches all exceptions. So this this is redundant. This will never ever run, right? Because this is this catches all exceptions. Is so it efficient that way? Is it efficient that way to catch all exceptions? Well, it depends. Sometimes if you're just if you're just writing something quickly, you know, honestly, a lot of times I'll use just exception. If I don't have a reason to differentiate between the errors. Then I'll just catch with the with the with the superclass exception. The external message, the the ex dot message will yeah it'll show. Let's try it. So let's comment this out. 
and we'll run it and let's see what the difference the message is. So when we divide by zero, attempted to divide by zero, right? So, <coughs> but that's just the message. You may want to, well, you may have to do some other things. Like you may have to clear out variables or otherwise make sure other things have been happening, right? The message is just that, a message. So there may be, you may come across times when um, you need to handle different exceptions in different ways. Okay? And maybe you need to suggest a solution for the problem. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so does everyone understand exceptions? <coughs> 